we can start looking at the agenda for today's session. So we will start now with an introductory presentation of the Rural Energy Community Advisory Hub, uh, RECA for short. We will explain the objectives of this initiative, the types of technical assistance that are offered, and how to apply for, for them. We will then give the floor to one of the beneficiaries of the pilot phase, namely the community of Androdoco in Italy, um, who will share the experience with the technical assistance services provided by the advisory hub. Um, then after this testimony, we will share some recommendations for the application process to help you prepare a strong application based on lessons learned from uh, reading through applications we have received so far. And then we will open the floor um, for your questions. You will be invited, invited to raise your hand and take the floor or leave a question in the chat. And then we we'll finally will conclude the webinar in about 50 minutes from now. So, so that's our plan for this session. Uh, let's now start introducing the Rural Energy Community Advisory Hub, RECA. Uh, RECA is an initiative of the European Commission intended to boost the development of sustainable energy community projects in rural areas across Europe. Apart from technical assistance, RECA delivers other activities such as the identification of best practices and the provision of networking activities uh, for energy communities and local stakeholders. Um, but we will focus on the technical assistance in this webinar. The key objectives of the technical assistance are twofold. One is to help improve the development and implementation of projects, which will be the tailor-made based on the needs of each selected beneficiary. And then the other objective is to inspire widespread socially inclusive energy transition efforts in rural areas across Europe. Specifically, there are five main types of technical assistance services that are offered. Investment and financial assistance, technology and system related advice, legal or regulatory support, communication support and capacity development and knowledge transfer support. Be aware that it is possible to request multiple services of these types within one application. So you do not need to submit one application per type of support. You can combine them in one. Then depending on the needs of the selected communities, technical assistance will be provided in the form of either extensive support or concise support, depending on the number of days of advisory support required. Thus, Extensive support will include about 20 expert days, whereas concise support will provide about five expert days. If we look at who can apply for these um, technical assistance in the next slide, um, we will see that the main, <laughs> um, let's see if there's like, not coming up. up, it's not coming up yet. Oh yes, it is now, sorry. <laughs> Yes, so energy communities or aspiring energy communities can apply according to the EU definition. And crucially, they need to be located in rural areas based on the Degerba classification. And if an electricity citizen energy community wants to switch to biogas supply, this would also be eligible in keeping with the gas market proposal. Then uh, for those that are not aware, we also wanted to let you know that the Energy Community Repository will also provide technical assistance, but to non-rural energy communities. If we receive an application that is not eligible under the RECA, we will transfer it to the repository for their consideration. It is important to note that it is not possible to receive support from both RECA and the repository. It is one or the other. Now, we can look at the six eligibility criteria for candidates to technical assistance under RECA. So first, the community needs to fit within the EU definition of energy community. Second, the community or its activities must be located in a rural area within the EU. 
then the legal form of the community must be either legal entity, informal community of actors, or a collective of actors. And fourth, all community members must be eligible to participate in the project as per EU regulations. Then members must show to be committed to the community through a letter of intent that should be submitted with the application. And six, the community must appoint one member as representative of the community for us to be in contact with them. Once an application is declared eligible based on these six um, criteria, the application will be evaluated against the following 12 assessment criteria. This is all explained in the guidance documents that you can find online, but we can quickly go through them. So type of factors, it is important that you show that there's a variety of members in the community from natural persons to SMEs to local authorities. Then it is important that your application shows uh, clearly um, what is the level of maturity of your community, where it is setting up, developing or operating. Then level of sustainability, um, you need to show whether you have a vision for how the community will stay active in the long term. Then need of assistance, type of assistance required and the impact of assistance that you expect are three crucial criteria uh, you really need to keep in mind when preparing your application. Then we will also look at the level of reasonability of your request, the level of scope and resources considering the time frame of the technical assistance. Then um, good is you can show whether you have support from a local authority through a letter of intent or, or the proof. Then we will also be looking at the potential of transferability of your project, your intentions um, as a possible future best practice example uh, that can be uh, also um, inspiring uh, for other communities. Then it is important that you show that the community applying for technical assistance is not currently supported by other schemes at EU national or regional level. And then finally, the community needs to demonstrate strong commitment and adequate capacity to collaborate and engage in the delivery of the technical assistance. Then in terms of timing, um, the current call for applications was um, open on the 12th of September. Uh, there is an online application a form available in all the EU languages. And there's also a question by question guidance note on how to apply. You can find it online. Um, we had a first cutoff date on the 31st of October, after which we have done a first round of eligibility checks and assessment. But then the application process is open till the end of the year, closing on the 31st of December, meaning that you can still submit your application until that date. Uh, then from January uh, onwards, we will start with the matching of the selected beneficiaries with the um, adequate experts. And then we will start with the provision of technical assistance. So if we look uh, in more detail at the application process, you can submit your application on uh, EU survey until the end of the year. Then we will do a first check to determine whether your application is eligible. Then we will go into a more detailed assessment through the 12 criteria that we just um, described. Then uh, there will be a list of selected uh, communities based on the scoring that each of them received. And then once we receive the approval of the European Commission, the selected beneficiaries will be notified of the result of the application, and then we will start working with them. You can find uh, the application form on EU survey, and we will share this link with you uh, after the webinar. And you will find, again, all of the information that we are presenting now about the application process on the guidance notes. But if you still have any questions about uh, how to present your uh, application or anything about the whole technical process, you can contact us at our functional mailbox, reka at And uh, Then a final word, well, yes. <laughs> now, just to quickly show you um, a screenshot of the application form on EU survey on the left. And then on the right, you can see the cover page of the guidance notes 
that is also available for you. You can submit your application in any of the EU languages, so you can express yourself in your native uh, language. Then, uh, in terms of application implementation process, yes, um, once you are selected, we will match you with experts. You can develop together a work plan with the concrete milestones that you are uh, planning to follow. Then the expert will deliver the second consistency agreed. And then once this work is completed, we will request feedback from your side and from the expert. And we will uh, close the um, delivery of assistance with you. We've been uh, running a pilot phase in the last um, couple of months with three selected communities in different member states um, as an opportunity to test the application material and get a better view on the needs of the rural energy communities and to fine tune our uh, service offer. And it is in this context that I would like to now move on to the second part of the webinar uh, where we um, ask the beneficiary of the phase, the community of Androdoco in Italy. We have Andrea De Silvestri with us to tell us about their experience in receiving technical assistance under the advisory hub in the pilot phase. So um, over to you, Andrea, <laughs> feel free to take the floor. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Andrea De Silvestri and now today I will represent the, the rural energy communities of, um, of Antrodoco as one of its founding members. Now I will try to share my presentation. Where are we? We are in a little village at the center of Italy in the Lazio region, the, um, composed by almost uh, 2,040 um, inhabitants. And uh, this is our image of the village right now. So as you see, we are between the mountains in a, in a narrow valley. Uh, about the rural energy communities, we start to talk about it uh, almost two years ago. Then one year ago, there was the first uh, call for interest done by the municipality. And we formally registered the um, association, the, um, the chair of Antrodogo, uh, at the last, at, at the, this summer, at the end of this summer. Uh, at the beginning, we were uh, just 15 members, uh, and one of them is the municipality of, uh, of Antrodoco. Then we applied to uh, this project to to boost, uh, say, the, the project to the next level. So to to um, let the, the communities grow and uh, also start to do the feasibility studies of all the plants. So there were, um, uh, um, let's say, a call with the REGA team to assess uh, the needs. And that's, uh, that these three uh, activities were the one we finally uh, agreed on. So the social engagement of the community and energy need assessment to um, have a, a better picture of what are the electricity consumption of all the communities and uh, first design of all the system uh, needed to uh, supply the energy. <clears throat> so about the first one, there were uh, a meeting in Antrodoco and we were able to reach uh, different members of the, of the community. And as the project spread, and between the members, uh, this activity was extremely successful because, and that's the picture of the community right now. So there are several uh, subjects. So let's say the municipality, the citizens, uh, some uh, private companies. And right now uh, we are 86 members. Uh, counting uh, of uh, almost uh, 155 point of deliveries that includes uh, 11 presumers and 110 consumers. Uh, we also, as the uh, going uh, deeper about the projects, as as the 
uh, surface available um, of the municipality was not sufficient for the, um, let's say, photovoltaic systems. Uh, we explore some uh, agreement with uh, with private citizens to have our uh, surface right on 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 the on the rooftop to to install there some uh, some plants and so there was a a big increment in the, in the members of the of the communities and then talking about the feasibility studies we indicate to um, the technical part that was followed by the and green companies. Uh, the different uh, point and surface available for the municipality. And uh, so let's see what's next. OK, this is the um, consumptions of the community that was um, studied by the the, the by and green so they characterize our uh, load profile uh, the one at, at the winter in in the blue and in orange the one in the summer uh, starting from that point uh, they designed the the systems so these are uh, the area areas taken into the account that are all part of the um, Anthrodogo municipalities. Yeah. So, and here we can see some uh, um, design of the plants. So, just at this one, there was uh, an hostel uh, in in Anthrodogo, uh, a school, uh, the um, uh, the local police station. Uh, a supermarket, then uh, several one, uh, so other buildings owned by the municipality, uh, the cemetery also, and some other industrial uh, <clears throat> buildings. And another school in a fraction of uh, Anthrodogo, and at the, at the end, uh, the system, uh, the, the, the total uh, system uh, was sized um, for a target um, power of 500 kilowatts of uh, photovoltaic systems. And it was decided to uh, put also a 100 kilowatts cogeneration uh, system based on, on uh, biomass. To obtain these uh, nice final results, well, where we can see that there is uh, almost a perfect balance between the uh, production and the consumption of the um, rural energy communities. As you can note, that the consumption are, all, are also a little bit uh, smoothed thanks to uh, some storage system uh, taken into account. So apart from that, there they also did a report, uh, the end green, and to complete these uh, feasibility studies. And now we will um, use the feasibility studies to get some fund uh, to um, uh, financial uh, to all the, uh, the the plans we were resized. And that's almost everything right now. I can. I finished my presentation. Uh, uh, what's next? I don't know. Uh, now we are open to 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 share uh, other uh, our examples and um, our experiences with other communities, and we we will need to go in into detail and the management of all this stuff. So uh, it will be the. Uh, uh, you know the interaction between the consumers, the consumers, the municipality, uh, the government, and we in which kind of uh, agreement we will uh, define. Um, so there is a lot of uh, stuff to do um, in the management of the communities and also in uh, following the growing up of the community itself. But it's a very good starting point.
thanks to uh, the Riga team and the and Green and for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Andrea. It is really valuable to hear from your experience. Um, so, well, if any of the participants in this webinar wants to ask any questions to Andrea, they can do that in the Q&A section in, in a moment. Um, but we can go on to the recommendations for preparing your application, uh, hoping that the case of Andrea has inspired you <laughs> to apply. Um, so based on lessons learned after reviewing the first round of applications received, we have here some suggestions for what you need to consider to develop a strong application. So the first thing we would like to recommend is that you provide as much detail as possible, especially in the questions of why you need support. Um, it is particularly relevant for us to learn about the bottlenecks and challenges you are facing. Um, also, how do you expect technical assistance to support you? And it is really valuable if you can specify the results and outcomes that you are expecting to receive from this technical assistance. And then another point uh, where we really appreciate detail is the exact location of your community, because that helps us to determine whether you are eligible uh, based on the, the global classification of what um, is a rural community. So if we, I'm, I'm very sorry, but so the exact um, location of your community or where you are executing your activities, because that's really important for us, because it, it could be that your community, the legal entity is in the middle of the city centre, but the activities of your community are taking place in a rural area. So if there's a distinction between the two, please let us know that in the application form. There is, we have made that distinction, so please be as detailed as possible with streets and everything, so we can make a proper assessment um, if you're eligible on them. That's exactly. Um, but then at the same time, when you request Sodic system services, it is critical for us that you are as specific, targeted and focused as possible. The, the clearer picture you can give us of what you need how you think these uh, services are going to benefit your projects, the better we can assess your application and the, better, the more impact we can make for you. So try to um, select just what you think would be the most uh, important types of services for your case. And then be as concrete, practical and tangible as possible, um, as far as you can avoid using abstract terms, vague expressions. So again, give us the clearest possible picture so we understand your case and can give you the best support. Then um, we have some other recommendations for you. Um, as soon as I see the slide transitioning, I'm still in the first one. Yes, there is another, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, we have observed that several applications uh, leave the details about the request of services and the challenges that, that the community faces for the other info question at the very end of the application form. So our recommendation to help you score higher is to provide all of these details in the previous sections of the application form. When we ask you about the description of your community, your objectives, and the type of support that you require, please give all of the details in those earlier sections. Do not leave all of your elaboration for the other info. All the info should be for additional information, but not for the really relevant one for the assessment of the application. Then we have also noted that some applications seem to um, not distinguish clearly the question about the description of the community and their objectives and why they require technical support. So be clear in um, not mixing up the, the information you provide in the two of these questions. Then be mindful of the EU definition of energy community and the legal form that you select, because again, this has an implication in the eligibility assessment that we do of your application. And also linking with eligibility, make sure that you attach a letter of intent to make your application eligible. So you need to show that you have 
members in your community that have really committed to supporting your work. And if you have also sort of intent from local authorities that support your community, it is also highly valuable that you provide it in your uh, application. Yeah, and I would just like to add one small thing because um, Christina all very kindly said it, but I would really like to emphasize it. Yes, you can apply for multiple types of uh, technical assistance services in one application, but please really consider which ones are most relevant, which one you need the most to make the direct steps be as targeted as possible. I can fully understand that the community could benefit from all types of services that we are offering, but we also it needs to remain within the scope of the project and everything. So please consider what are the types of services we need right now to get to that next step to help us develop to, in, as Andrea said, to boost to the next level. So we can really targetedly help you there. Because if everybody applies for all assistances, it might become a bit tricky on the website. That's, I just really want to add something. Well, um, so these are the key recommendations we wanted to share with you uh, for your application. But then we can open the floor for any questions you might have. We can now move on to the Q&A um, segment of the webinar. So feel free to leave your questions in the chat or raise your hand if you wish, and we will gladly take your questions. Yes, because Hans Olof already has a question for you, Andrea, for the community of Androco. He asked, what kind of energy storage facility do you have in Androco? So Andrea, can you please take the floor? Yes, we just consider a uh, residential lithium uh, storage to back the small producers, uh, prosumers, uh, PV plants. So um, just a general one, but we, we, we don't have it right now. We just uh, size what would be the right uh, storage for the systems. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, again, if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to raise your hand. Ah, perfect. My, my apologies if I mispronounce your name, but Einar Silinski. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, thank you for your information. I'm from Latvia and working in the ministry more or with the legislation on all that. The question is following, uh, that we, uh, we have the basic legislation in place, but uh, not yet the implementing uh, regulations. And we don't have as well as uh, the uh, uh, registration of energy communities and all that should be uh, finished if we manage by the end of February. The question is uh, therefore in uh, 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 if there is an initiative group which uh, is not uh, a energy community, pro probably even not a legal entity or something, but uh, a group of uh, of persons wanting with uh, wanting to, to develop an energy community, and they will need also some, all kind of advice and on the same time there is no the legislation is also in the implementation process do you see uh, it appropriate and possible to make such kind of application uh, in, for for latvian initiative group thank you very much for your question and yes even if um a group of actors so this is why we said as long as there's a group of actors or an informal group of actors, if they have the intention of setting up an energy community and they would like to request support for this, they can most certainly um, submit an application for it. And then depending on what kind of support they um, would like to receive, we can assess how we could help them. I mean, if there's not a lot of national regulation frameworks, we might be limited in how much legal, direct legal support we can give, but I'm sure that there are, of course, many other services that we can give. And even if they would request some legal support, we can see what we can do within the remits what exists. Because there are quite some countries that haven't fully transposed the EU directives yet or are indeed are in the beginning stages. We are aware of this. And indeed, if a community or if a group is just setting up or intending to set up a community, they are more than welcome to submit an application. Uh, because the idea is that if we manage to make such application is that in fact uh, uh, looking at the concrete example 
uh, you make some even some uh, assistance to to this legal form that we can and then we uh, from the ministry side uh, take into account the project results and might improve uh, for example the legislation or uh, even further on the support uh, uh, mechanisms because we have allocated as well as some funding and but the uh, investment, uh, uh, these projects are not yet uh, drafted and uh, based on that we identify the needs for and the appropriate amount of investment support uh, in the project and therefore taking into account this, the government, you know, the ministry can draft such kind of uh, of support programs. Uh, that more or less is the idea if if it seems appropriate or not. Um, I'm sorry. Um, could you repeat repeat a specific question? Because I'm sorry, it kind of. Uh, the question is uh, the the in the process of understanding the needs of uh, energy communities, the output might be uh, also proposals for the legislation or for uh, support pro programs at the national level. Okay. So it would be kind of the result of the technical assistance could also kind of support the development of the policies. Is that basically what you're saying? Um, oh, Eugenia, I see you have raised your hand. Eugenia Bonitis-Vasia is the project director of this um, wonderful project. So maybe she is better placed to answer this question than me. Yes, it, yes. Please take the floor. Thank you. That's OK. So the technical assistance, as we are um, foreseen it into this, this this project is really to give technical assistance to the community itself. So it's really to help the community to evolve and expand and understand what they can do within obviously the legislation that is set in that country. Uh, I don't think the output of this project of the technical assistance for the community should be a recommendation for your um, legal framework in your country. I don't think this is what the Commission would like to see out of this support. It's really empowering the citizen within a structure that is already in place, hopefully. The, the Red Directive was supposed to be transposed a few years ago, so if the, the, the country is lagging behind a little bit, is 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 not, um, it's not something that we can support to this project, especially so yeah, I don't I don't think that that is the type of technical assistance that we are providing here. Okay, I hope that's you. clarified. Thank you, Eugenia. And then we have another raised hands from Lucy Herita. Yes, please take the floor. Thank you. Um, hi, and thanks for this webinar. Um, I just wanted to know, you said that the application can be done in any EU language. Um, will the, the technical assistance be in any language too or exclusively in English? No, so in the application form, we do ask you if you would be comfortable to receive um, technical assistance in English, because it's just a bit easier for us as a project to communicate with the community. But if you prefer to have technical assistance in a different language or a native language, you can indicate this in the application form and we will keep this in mind. Um, uh, so if you then pass the eligibility uh, check and if you pass the assessment form and then we come to the matching with experts, this is something we keep in strong consideration because if you don't feel comfortable communicating in English or receiving support in English, then uh, we need to find an expert that speaks the language that you are comfortable in, because that's the most important in this regard. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else? Also, please don't be afraid to use the chat if you would prefer to do this. And otherwise, in the registration form for this webinar, we also gave people to uh, the option to submit a question. So there we received a question that if a community needs formal approval by authorities to set up a rural energy community. The answer to this, that is no, you don't need formal approval of a local or a regional authority to set up your rural energy community to be eligible for this. 
Um, we just asked that if you were you in the application form, we have a question asking like, oh, but do you have the support? That's the only thing. It's not, uh, you don't need form of approval. It's not an eligibility question. It's just something we ask in order to determine in what position or in what stage of development you are. So that's it. Um, we received another question about the criteria. So the eligibility criteria and the assessment criteria, but we have already covered that. Okay. So uh, please uh, know that. And again, everything we have presented today in the first section of the webinar, all this information you can find in the guidance note. And in a few minutes, I will post the link to the application form and the guidance notes in the chat. So that's also easy for access for you. And also in a follow up, we'll share this contact details as well with you. So, Another yes. Question. Olivia, please take the floor. Yes, hello. Do you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. OK, uh, the question is, uh, what, what kind of result do you expect that after um, this um, technical support, there will be energy community made. Is this the result in the end? No, so the result, Am if I... you want it, well, no and yes, I shouldn't have so no, my apologies. Um, so it kind of depends. What we want to achieve with the technical assistance is for the beneficiary or the applicant to have made the next step. So if that is, um, so that all very much depends on the different applicants, on the different energy communities. Because indeed, some people might still be in a um, setting up stage. So it could be a group of actors that want support to become a legal entity or to develop a business plan. So then the next step for them would be to set up the legal energy community. However, if there's already a group of people that are considered to be an energy community and they just and they want support for some system technology or they want to see how can we improve certain aspects of it or also capacity building how can we share our message how can we have more people join our energy community this is also something that we can offer so the end result of the technical assistance depends very much on the applicant and what they need so it is really but the goal of it is indeed again to quote andrea again to boost the community or the group of actors to the next level to take that next step to further develop because in the end, we want to see a lot more rural energy communities throughout Europe. And that's the goal of this technical assistance, to help anybody interested in this, to take either the first step, second step, third step, depending on where they are in that process. That OK, thank question? you. Excellent. Yeah. No, excellent. I, I understood. This is very, very nice uh, because uh, actually in Latvia, I'm, I'm from Latvia. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Uh, because, as um, Einar said already, we don't have legislation yet. So what we can do uh, in advisory hub, uh, only local um, communities, uh, people groups, they can come together and, OK, I decide, uh, let's, uh, let's make um, energy community. But for sure, uh, for us, it will be uh, only this uh, first, first beginner steps. <laughs> Because uh, okay, we can we can make uh, 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 this legal form, and maybe we can uh, I don't know make some calculations or technology, um, how to explore technology support or something like that. But okay, thank you very much. I I understood. And and the last question: uh, How how are you with uh, experts from uh, Latvia? Um, do you have some applications or? Maybe I can I can help to uh, how to say uh, share the information that uh, in Latvia there uh, is necessary to apply uh, for experts. How okay, many? thank you. Sir. Yeah, um, I don't know the exact number at the moment. I do know that um, at the moment, in parallel for the call for applications, we also have a call for experts outstanding as part of RECA, in which we indeed are asking from from experts all over Europe. To please submit a call. Uh, to please submit an um, application. Another application. Submit your CV, your yes. profile. So, as to submit their CV and profile, so that they could also help us implement um, technical assistance. So again, in the follow-up of this webinar, we will also share this link, and we kindly invite you to please share this with people if you think they could add um, 
valuable information or if they could help provide uh, technical assistance in your countries, it's uh, only encouraged. And uh, we thank you very much for that. So, but you will okay. receive all this information. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to apply, um, uh, how to say, not in, not person, but uh, organization yes, in general? Yes. Yeah, ah. that's possible. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, and CV and CV is necessary for from uh, from organization. Yeah. So if you apply as an organization, you can either submit a company CV or individual CVs. It's kind of what you feel comfortable with. As long as we get a good idea of what kind of support you can provide, that's really uh, important. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other questions or in the chat? I don't think there was anything. I'm raised. I'm no? no, I think there was still an old one. Okay. There's a question that we repeatedly get about whether there will be more calls for applications for this type of technical assistance maybe next year. Uh, that's something that we repeatedly yeah. get asked. And that is not the case. Uh, this is a one time thing. So we can guarantee that there will be more opportunities like this one. So that's why we really want to encourage you to seize this opportunity and apply now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and something else we get asked quite um, often, um, you can't get direct financial assistance. The technical assistance that we provide is in the form of expert days. So we can't hand over some money and be, okay, this is what you do. It will be uh, technical assistance in the form of expert days that will help you in however they would need. And so I want to make that clear as well. Um, so anything else? And also something we have asked, because again, you can submit questions um, via the reca at ecorist.com uh, email address as well. So we have received a few there as well. So something else we got asked, um, how we connect the experts with the community and if that's something the community do, must do. Again, linked to what I just said, the call for experts is open and we as the RECA will identify a suitable experts and then um, make that link with us. I just saw a few things pop up in the chat uh, from Gillian Barclay. I, is, I assume this again is for the call for experts. Yes, you can be a lawyer and an expert. It's something that we provide, intend to provide is also legal and regulatory support. And if you think as a lawyer you can help with that, that would be good. Um, and indeed, um, for an expert to support the community, they need to be independent from the community. There can't be any um, confidentiality. That's not the word I was looking for. Conflict of interest. Thank you. Yes, there can't be a conflict of interest. So this is also why we take care of selecting the experts, because that. It's just something that's important also for the European Commission, because keep in mind, this is an initiative of the Commission. We need to keep all of that um, separate. Andrea, I think, did you raise your hand? Yeah, I also have a question. Of course. If yeah. you are, <laughs> if you are uh, something in mind in putting um, like in relationship the different communities um, mm -hmm. to share experiences and um, case studies or, and, and so forth. If you are already uh, plan uh, something, or I don't know, uh, that's a piece. This is yeah. Nice. This is more part of the other aspects of the of our project, but it is definitely something that we are. Um, if you go to the RECA website, I will put a link in the chat for that in a minute as well. You can join the um, rural energy community network. So there is something in we do intend to kind of group people together. Um, Eugenia, I don't know if you want to elaborate a bit more on this. Uh, yeah, so we would like to do that, of course. There's uh, something that it's very uh, useful. But um, so yeah, there is join our network, and we are now looking through all the people that have decided to join our network. And the idea is to put their name on the website so that you can go and have a look at other communities. They are part of the network or maybe experts that are in your country and so on. Everyone that has joined the network will be published on the website. Um, the other things is the best practice document that we are developing are also a source of information of 
other communities that have done something that is worth noting and uh, no one could stop you to then approaching them even if it's not us putting them in contact they have uh, they they have been approached by us they are a, they are a, a good example there is the, the there are two best practice example now on the website uh, our newsletter also has always little stories about um, either there was one on Engri in this this newsletter there were two energy community in the previous one so it's another way to find a reality that exists either in your country or in Europe uh, and then going forward, we will see what we can do to to try to uh, yeah, have more networking experience. The events obviously are something that could be used for this. So we have another event to organize next year. And uh, what we would like to do is really bringing everyone together and having a day where we everyone can meet each other and, and so on. But this is is still in discussion. Let's see what we can do. Thanks. Ooh. Thank you Thanks. very much. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions, hands raised, please, or in the chat? So I think otherwise we could maybe start wrapping up a bit. Yeah, absolutely. A bit ahead of time, but not a bad thing. <laughs> we have also with the schedule. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, oh. Um, yes, we will make the recording available. It will be uh, shared on the RECA website. So it won't be available directly, but it should be available um, relatively soon. <laughs> but again, keep in mind, most of the information we have shared, aside from answering the questions, can be found in the guidance note. I shared the link a bit in the chat and you will find uh, receive this information in a bit as well. Um, I, there's one more question about um, the call for experts. Maybe we should have dedicated a bit more time to this, but OK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what is the level of commitment expected? Um, is there some flexibility in providing the assistance? So we expect you to commit for a certain amount of expert days. So we link you with a community who says, I need this expertise based on the call for experts. We, you can uh, let us know, like, I can do this call for, I can do this expertise in this language for this country. We then make the link, we introduce, there is an agreement, the expert and the community make a joint work plan so that both sides agree what will be done, when it will be done, and how it will be done in a certain way. And then, then, so that is the level of commitment expected. You agree, I will do this amount of days over this time span, and this is the result. So that's kind of also a bit of flexibility based on the um, um, availability of the experts, which we also ask for, for in the call for experts. So if you're only available in January and February of next year, you can indicate that, and then we keep that in mind. Absolutely, and once we have we have matched the experts with the community in their very first meeting, the kickoff meeting of the technical assistant, they will have to develop the expert and the community a work plan, so they have concrete milestones and specifying by when they expect to deliver certain activity. So they will need to be confirming that mm -hmm. they are they agree on the timeline that they will have the availability and resources for the provision of the services. Okay. I'm going to go into yeah. wrapping up, uh, next looking steps. at the next step. So as discussed, the COPA applications um, for both uh, communities and experts, um, it's still open. Uh, you can submit your application until the 31st of December. And then well, from January onwards, we will start uh, with implementation of technical assistance um, sooner or later based on um, the, um, the date when we receive your application, the level of complexity. But yes, we will start from January onwards with the kickoff meetings for every specific uh, community. And then, as mentioned, if you have any questions that we haven't been able to address during this webinar or that you can find in neither the guidance note or on the RECA website, feel free to get in touch with us at reka at .com, and we will be gladly um, answering your doubts. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, we can close this webinar. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, for all of the questions you've um, posed. And again, um, we look forward to receiving your application and we'll be in touch. Goodbye, everyone. Mm -hmm.